Hi everybody and welcome to the quick preview of Power Builder 2019 R2. Today I will show you some of the new features of Power Builder 2019 R2. Let's begin by the new object named Ribbon Bar Control. You can see right here that we have added this ribbon bar and this is basically the same as you already know from Microsoft Excel or Word for example. Here you can see that you have a new application menu with the application buttons and a sub menu inside of it right here. We have already divided this by panels. This is the windows, the boards, action, view and print panels. This is already separated by categories. We have the home and the navigate category. This is already filled up by adding some of the large buttons, some of the small buttons in here. We also support the check boxes, we have a drop down list boxes, we have um, different other controls as well. So let's take a look into how to actually create one of these controls. I will now open up Power Builder, go to the tools menu and select the ribbon bar builder. And by clicking on here, you can see that we have my ribbon bar control in here. So if I scroll down a little bit, I can now modify this right here and you'll see that this address button right here, if I add a new one, I can take advantage of the automatic code completion features right here. And I have set this to false. This is not enabled anymore. So I'll enable this back again and here we have it. So this is how we do it during the creation of this ribbon bar control but let's now take a look at how to modify this during runtime so this is my ribbon bar control object and these are some of the methods in this case I'm going to be disabling this object now if I scroll down in here and see in this option right here we can see another example of how to insert a new ribbon bar control object inside of it so that's the ribbon bar control now let's take a look into the UI theme enhancements. Now if I click here, you can see in it that we have a data window. Now this data window has a set has a specific color set for the selected row. And you see here that you have also a specific color for these buttons. If I were to click this order window right here, you see that the data window has a different background color for the selected row. And the buttons also apply a different UI and UX. And that is because we can now apply the changes to the UI and UX to a very granular level. That means that I can modify a specific item inside a specific object if I wanted to. Another nice feature of this is that it also is now accepting the modification of the UI from visual user objects. For example, this one right here is a visual user object and this is actually a single line edit and it has an icon right here. So if you look into this, you'll see that this is set with a certain specific color. But if I go in here, this is the same object with a different UI set for it. So now let's take a look into that. So if I open right here, I can see that I have the facial user object. This is the single line edit. By the way, I think you'll like this. We have also added a new placeholder property for the single line edit. And this is independent of a visual user object or not. So now this is the visual user object that I was talking about. Now let's take a quick look into the themes JSON file to see how this is actually set up. So uh, we'll look for the themes JSON file. Notice this is the specific one for that object. So I'll double click on it. And if you see, this is for the general object. You see right here, it's setting its properties as it. Now, if I look down a little bit more, you'll see that this is specifically for this window, for this object inside of a tab control, etc., etc., uh, specifying the UI for this. So this is how we can actually manage this at a very granular level. So that is some of the enhancements of the UI and UX themes. Now let's take a look at another nice feature of the Power Builder 2019 R2 release. Now remember how we used to always want to use some certain C-sharp DLLs and we used to use a COM wrapper 
in order to be able to use those DLLs. Well, this is now being added as a new C Sharp class importer tool. And this doesn't require a COM wrapper because this is actually consuming it in a native format. So notice right here, we have a source C Sharp DLL file. I'll select one. So I have one right here. I'll open it up. This is actually setting up the PBT destination and the Pebble. Right down here, you can see this is my DLL. In it, I have a class. And in this class, I have certain functions in it. So I can select whichever I need or I want. And notice that this is the resulting that I would have. This is inside this Pebble. I have this new non-visual user object. And inside of it, I have the functions that are being imported from the C Sharp DLL. Now I can set this up as a non-visual user object because I'm actually setting up the prefix right in here and the prefix of, of the functions in here and the get functions, the set functions. And I can also tell Power Builder to place in the object the basic power script functions that I need to actually consume this and for that I only need to select this once right in here. So I would click import. But I have already done that so I'll just click cancel right here and show you that object in here. So if I double click here you can see that this is the actual C Sharp DLL being natively imported into my Power Builder application. And this is the PowerScript code that is automatically inserted for me so that I can go ahead and use this in a very native way. OK, now let's take a look at a different object added into the new release of Power Builder. I will be closing this up. And now I will open a different project right in here. So I'll go back in here. OK, so this is a new control. And this is called the Web Browser Control. This control is actually based on Chromium. So this is actually going to be having a lot of new enhancements as time comes by. And now let's run this. And in this control, you'll notice that I'm calling the Facebook website. But if I use the old OLED Web Browser Control, I would start getting error messages in it. Now let's take a look at the HTTP2 protocol. See how this is fully supported in the old OLED web browser control. This is actually not supported. Now let's take a look at an HTML5 score. Notice how we immediately get a very high score for this. And let's take a look at the OLED web browser control. This is a very low score. Now let's see some example of some games inside of this. So this is a power builder application and it's already being capable of running HTML5 games. This is something nice. Now if I tried this on all the web browser control, you won't even be able to see the games in here. So it's another nice feature that we have incorporated into this new release. Thank you very much for joining us and have a good day.